Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and we're going to start talking about Kubernetes services. And the first one we're going to go over is called NodePort. So in order to do that, you need to have a cluster up and running. And if you've been using the default Minikube uh, settings, you're going to run into some problems. I'm going to show you how to get through all of that because I found no shortage of people on the internet struggling with this. <laughs> all right, so we're going to start out by just doing a uh, a minikube cluster with a default status. Um, so you do minikube start, what it's going to do is it's going to use the Docker desktop driver, download your image, and then it's going to build an image, or uh, I'm sorry, build a, a minikube container on Docker desktop as the virtualization layer, like as your hypervisor. And we're going to start playing with services in that. And what you're going to notice is that there are a lot, um, it's, the configuration is much different using the Docker driver. Uh, so we're going to do that and I'm going to build it and I'm going to show you how to make it work. And then we're going to delete this cluster and we're going to use VirtualBox driver and I'm going to show you how to also make that work. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this because with the deletion and creation of uh, clusters, it's going to make this a little bit more lengthy than usual. Okay, so we're done now, and I should be able to run a uh, cube cuddle, and we'll just do like a config view. And I can see I got some output here. Here is my Docker mini cube Docker container that's going to act as my hypervisor, and uh, well, Docker is. So this is my node, my single node, and we can go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and create a, a deployment. kubectl fly f my deployment file. And then let's just do a get all. kubectl get all. All right, so we can see here the deployment created a replica set, which created three pods. And they are all in a ready state. Perfect. So these are just Nginx pods. So now let's say I want to test this. How would you get to the Nginx splash page like localhost on port 80 basically? Well if you're running a docker container you would run the docker run command and pass the dash p flag for the port and you would map the port right F so there's like a port on your computer and then there's a port on the container. Well it's very similar uh, with Kubernetes services. So you need to map a port on your computer to a port on the service. And you could think of it almost kind of like a, a proxy or a load balancer. And then the port on the service maps to a port on the pod. So there's kind of like the service is kind of like this middleman object. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a service, and a service is an object, just like a deployment or a replica set, using a service definition file. Now, the service definition file has, again, the same root properties, API version, kind, metadata, and spec. Um, we're going back to doing v1, just like a pod, so there's no more apps. The kind, of course, is a service. Uh, the metadata is just a name. You can use labels, uh, too. And then for spec, you have three specific pieces. You need your port, or your type. What type of service is this? What ports are you going to use? And the selector. And I'll explain why. So the type is because there's two different types of services, um, and you need to tell Kubernetes what type it is so it understands what kind of service to build. Pretty self-explanatory. The ports. Uh, Remember, this is from the perspective of the service, so its own port, in this case, is port 80. The target port is the port on the pod. So if I do a default Nginx deployment, which I did, by default, it's going to use port 80. So I'm going to map port 80 on the service to port 80, the target port, on the pod, because the pod is our target. And then the node port, I just picked it. This has to be in the range of like 30,000 to 50 something thousand. So I just picked a random number, 3,004. Um, and that's on the node. So this is on my like actual computer. So in the node port for now, 
uh, is on my computer. Now, we say we use the Docker driver to build this Minikube cluster. So technically, this is the node on the container hosting your Minikube cluster, which means you also need to map a port on your laptop or PC to the port on your Minikube container to the port on the service to the port on the pod. I know that sounds crazy, but so in order to understand like, okay, a target part port 80, I, that makes sense. But like, how does it know which pods to grab? And that's what you use a selector for. So you don't need to do the match labels in this case. All you need to do is pass which selector and it will just go grab any pod who has a front end, uh, an app front end key value pair selector and um, essentially load balance between them. And it's going to use a, uh, a random selection if you're wondering what algorithm it uses um, so that's something that you can update and edit but we're just going to go through the default stuff and I'll go ahead and show you how this works so again commands are the same uh, as far as creating and applying and all that stuff so I'm going to go into my services directory where I have my service file my service definition file and I'm going to go ahead and do an apply now um, let's go ahead and look at the services. Now, normally you would say like cube cuddle get service, right? Well, there's actually a little shorthand SVC for service. And I'm also going to do my alias K equals cube cuddle to make this much faster. K get SVC. So any shortcut is great. So you can see all I have right now is a cluster IP service running. And I haven't really explained what this is. And I'll get into this in my next video in detail, but just know for now that this is like an internal Kubernetes network. Uh, so the pods can talk to each other. Well, really, so everything in a cluster can talk to each other. So let's go ahead and create this. So kubectl, I don't even need to do that anymore. Okay, for kubectl, apply dash F service definition. So now I've created a service. So now I should be able to talk to the port on the service which will relay uh, its port and forward that traffic to a port on the node. So let's do a kubectl get all. And I can see here, now I have this web app service and it's forwarding traffic to port 80 on itself, um, to port 80 on the node from port 30,004 on, uh, I'm sorry, on the pod from 30,004 on the node. So if you were to do a get nodes, uh, kubectl get nodes with the wide flag, output wide, this is the internal IP address of my minikube node. So if, if you were to follow guides online or whatever, and you go to this uh, IP address on port 30, 30,004, it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. So how do you fix this? Well, again, um, your Docker driver is going to be kind of the root cause of this because of port forwarding on the Minikube container where your cluster lives. So um, one way to do it is to get the URL for your service. And you can, I'll do the whole command so you can see it. You can run kubectl uh, service and then the name of your service which mine is web app service and then do dash dash url um, let me make sure I got this command right oh I'm sorry not, it's not a cube cuddle command it's a mini cube command because right now we're talking about the node so we need to get the mini cube service web app service and it says, because you're using a Docker driver on Windows, the terminal needs to be open to run it. So now I have this persistent. I need to leave this running. But as you can see, it mapped uh, my local host home IP address on port 54,446. And this is forwarding traffic to 192.168.49.2 on port 30,004 here, which is forwarding traffic 
or and that and that is hitting my service and then my service is going to be mapping port 80 on itself to port 80 on the pod which pod any pod with the app front end uh, label for the selector and so this that's the chain of communication this is the IP address you actually want to use so you can see here the site can't be reached but if I put in this one boom we are now on our nginx deployment uh, replica set cluster of pods so this is how you do this with docker you have to use this mini cube service uh, URL generator to get the URL so you can see how is Minikube exposing this port. So this is very similar to just the expose idea in Docker. Now, if you don't want to do this gymnastics of port jumping through Minikube, uh, you need to use a different driver. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this Minikube cluster and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do it using the um, the VirtualBox driver and I also ran into a neat uh, resource constraint problem with VirtualBox and I'll uh, show you how I got around that as well. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to close my Nginx terminal or uh, browser and close my broken browser and let's just do a cleanup. So right now I've got my service and my deployment running. So I'm just going to delete my service uh, web app service oops and then I'm going to delete my deployment which is web app deployment okay so now we've gone ahead and cleaned up so now we're gonna do a mini cube not a stop a delete and what you'll see in docker is uh, my container has now been deleted and there's nothing there if you try to create a second mini cube cluster when you already have one up it's not going to work so now this is completely gone so now we need to actually run a, uh, a, f a flag to tell it what driver to use okay so we're gonna run mini cube start but this time I'm gonna say dash dash driver equals virtual box and you're going to run into a problem where it's going to tell you that you have some kind of virtualization issue and I have not yet found out uh, Minikube's answer to this problem because I have virtualization enabled on my computer um, but when I try to run this command by itself it tells me that I don't so what I do is I just disable the virtualization check so no dash dash no dash VTX dash check and this is going to disable the uh, mini cubes check to see whether or not your virtualization is on something's wrong with it so it's it's not picking up the fact I think maybe it's a Windows 11 thing um, but it's not picking up the fact that I'm using virtualization so now we have a virtual box VM that's getting created with two CPUs six gigs of memory ish and uh, if I open up VirtualBox, you can see right here it's running. And here's my system info, my video memory, and all that stuff. And it's off and running. You can see it here, it's starting to go. So I'll go ahead and pause the video until this cluster is done being created. Okay, and we're all done. So we should be able to run a config view total config view and see that we are now running minikube on I have a new server and yeah everything looks good so now all we need to do is create our deployment which we can do right now uh, cuttle apply dash f deployment and then kubectl apply dash f service kubectl get all I now have all my th 
three pods. Uh, I've got my web app service, my deployment replica set. I have desired state of three, current is three, ready is two. Uh, and there's a reason for this, and this is the resource constraint that I was talking about. Um, VirtualBox uses a lot more resources than Docker does, so um, you have to get in there and do some surgery to make this work. It's very, very easy. Uh, but essentially, if you see that you don't have a pod ready and it says pending, you might need to go, well, what is going on? Why? And so how I figured this out is I just kind of zoom. I started out really high and I was like, well, let me get my, let me get my node. And I can see some info about my node. And I was like, hmm, okay, that doesn't really tell me anything. So if get doesn't tell me what I want, then again, using the cube cuddle, I'm just typing it out for demonstration. You can describe the node. And this is where I saw, okay, my CPU, 25% of it is being used per node. That's a lot. That's, a, that's like a lot. So when you get down to total resources, my CPU, well, not my CPU, but the CPU al resources allocated for the virtual machine, virtual box is at 87%. So it doesn't have enough CPU, it has enough memory, it doesn't have enough CPU to create a third pod. And you can see here in the events, it says, all right, we're good, we're good, we're good, everything looks fine. Um, so there's not really an error, but you can see that it's resource starved. So uh, I ran a kubectl edit node command, and I just scrolly scrolled down, and I can see allocatable CPU 2. And I'm like, well, that's clearly not enough. The capacity is 2 as well, but I'm going to let it allocate 4. And we're going to say the capacity is 4. And you can see here you have your huge pages from memory and your pods and how many you can do and all that stuff. Um, so I just changed the CPU to 4 and I save this and it says, okay, mini cube's been edited. Uh, but when you do that, if you know anything about VMs, you cannot edit uh, a VM without stopping it. So um, while I updated my my node properties, right? If I describe my my node, while I edited my node properties, it does not help me at all. I still am resource starved. So what you actually have to do, and I can just leave all my Kubernetes stuff running for now, is I just need to, to stop this. I'll go ahead and save the state. And once it's stopped, um, I'm saving the state just so that it, there's not an improper shutdown. I could have stopped everything, but so um, now that it's stopped, you can go into the settings, system, processor, and you can increase the CPU. Now this one's not actually stopped because it's stopped, stopped. Uh, let me discard this saved state. So that is screwing me up okay there we go the save state it looks like it's using memory to do that so it's not actually stopped it's all the way all right so now i can come in here increase this to four cores hit okay and now i can see i have four and we can start this with a normal start and once you've reconfigured your vm to use four cores your node is already configured to use four cores. Uh, so when it comes up, we should be able to do a cube cuddle get all, and you should be able to see that you now have three uh, pods running. And if we do a cube cuddle describe node, we should see a lot less than 87% CPU utilization completely on the, the VM. So it's up. Let's go take a look. Cube cuddle, get all. Well, it's on. It may not be up. <laughs> I think it's still starting. 
Uh, let's do a config view. See if it even finds. Okay, it found it. Get it all. Maybe. I don't know. It could still be coming up. I'll pause it and wait. Okay, it's back up. I had to start it in a headless state. So I'm actually going to run my mini cube start again with the driver. So I'm going to do this reverse search for driver. And we'll go ahead and restart this. So here's my mini cube VM. Four processors. And this should take a second to finish. And then I'm going to describe the node. And we're going to check the CPU settings. Cube cuddle describe node. And you see it's already got my deployment running. So now we're at much less. So you can go back in and reconfigure this uh, as far as CPU allocation goes. Um, because it's not as efficient as Docker that does it automatically. But my service is running. So if we do a kubectl get all, my web app service is up. My pods are up. They are running. Everything looks good. So now we just get the node IP. So we can check this out. So cube cuddle get node o y. Here's my IP address. So now, because we're using a virtual machine, I should be able to go to the IP address of the virtual machine in VirtualBox on port 30004, which is going to forward to port 80 on my service, which is going to forward to port 80 on any pod with the app front end selector or uh, label, which would be these three. So let's test this. So here is the IP address of, just kidding. Here, here is the IP address of my node. And we're gonna do port 30,004. And we see that it works. So that is how you create a node port service and actually start connecting to things from your machine to your Kubernetes cluster. So that's pretty cool. So you can think of services, the exposed concept in Docker, and depending on the driver that you use, that you can now see, at least from my Windows machine as an example, how to do it with the VirtualBox driver and with the Docker driver and why each one is different. So hopefully it's not too complicated. Uh, this is your introduction to services with NodePort. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but if not, go ahead and close your browser. Delete your service. Delete your deployment. Delete your Minikube cluster. Oh, because it's from another process. Oops. This is why I use aliases. Cool. Down. It's gone. So everything's cleaned up. I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have questions. And I'll see you uh, in the next one.